Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to stay off of your toes. Frequently, I'm asked if we walk on our toes and that is incorrect. We are landing on the forefoot. See, the foot is anatomically divided between the heel and everything else is considered the forefoot. There is no contact between the midfoot and the ground other than through the intermediary of skin and muscles. I know you're used to seeing people walk with their heel landing, which is brutal, hence why there is so much padding on conventional shoes. And it is even worse when you decide to wear barefoot or minimalist shoes. Now, the great thing about minimal shoes is that it allows for great flexibility. But because of the minimal padding, you cannot land on your heel as you normally would with conventional shoes. But that's a good thing because it brings us back to nature, how we should naturally conduct our movement. Now, I've brought out a prop so I can explain where to land. Because when people think of landing on their forefoot, they immediately think about their toes and we're walking and a lot of people will say that they're bouncing and, and that's incorrect. What we're doing is we are focusing on a specific part of the foot and I'm gonna show you how to identify that. So I'm gonna stand on this elevated surface, this yoga block, and I'm just gonna, in a lax manner, hold the other leg out. And already you can see as I relax, cause I'm not holding it up, I'm not pressing it down into the ground. As I relax, it takes form and the form that it takes has the lateral edge closest to the ground. And that is where you want to land. Where you land in this moment is exactly where you should land while walking. You will find this indicated with all runners because they're using track shoes, their padding is very thin, very similar to barefoot shoes, minus the spikes. And if you watch any slow motion video of them running, you will always see that they land on the outer edge first. It is natural for us. And yes, I know you're gonna say, well, they're sprinting and they're leaning forward. No, it is the natural manner in which our leg hangs. If we were to suspend our leg, at any point in time, as soon as we relax, the outer, the lateral edge, the outside edge, falls lower than any other part of the foot. Lower than the ball of the foot, lower than the heel. So I'm gonna stand again, showing. And then I'll show you from the sides. And then I'll show you from the back. And no matter where you position it, the foot still lands in the same spot. Now, this is the way that nature intended. Why do you say that? Well, if you notice, from the top part of the foot, as I land, you'll see that the toes splay upon contact. The lateral edge takes the brunt of the impact, splaying as a suspension mechanism. And when it is time for me to propel forward, I will then squeeze or engage the foot musculature to then move forward. So it's giving me rebound, suspension, dampening, then rebound. See how that works? And this makes for an easier or more efficient way of walking. Your gait cycle will be greatly improved because you are no longer jabbing or harassing your feet. You're no longer damaging it. And if you think that heel striking does not damage your feet in the long run and the rest of your body, then try wearing a barefoot shoe, try heel striking, and see how that works for you. No matter what position you take, 
that is unloaded, the foot has that position of the lateral edge touching the ground first. Just to prove that I'm not forcing the position, I'm gonna lay prone and show you where the body naturally resorts to going. So I'm gonna lay on my chest and I'm just gonna lift the leg up. Now I'm not forcing it in any direction. I'm just leaving it relaxed and straight up. And do you see where is the highest point of my feet? Can you tell? Do you see that? Okay. On both feet, and I'm sure on yours at home, once you put your feet in this position and you take a look behind you, that you'll notice the part that is furthest away at all times is this forefoot section of the foot. The heel is not primarily to land on. It is used for support, heavy loads, more surface area when necessary. But we're talking about walking for intention to go many miles. If you don't believe me, lay on your stomach, look back at your feet, look at the highest point on your foot and you'll notice And if you find that hard, then you can just sit cross-legged and look at your foot. Don't tense, don't make any motion with the foot and look where it touches first. And it will always be the same. The lateral side of the foot will always be more pronounced than any other. Your load is dampened or supported through the lateral edge. So this is naturally how the body lands. When it's in its relaxed state, it gives you the clues as to how to land. So what I'd like you to do at home is find an elevated surface, a curb, let the unsupported leg hang loosely, and then just descend and bring that foot down to the ground and see which point touches first. I want you to repeat this 20 to 30 times for each leg. See the sensation, see the reaction of your feet upon impacting the surface and take note of how that feels. And I'm sure it'll feel remarkably better than landing on your heel. All right, guys, this is Grown and Healthy, the channel where we explore self-improvement through movement. Thanks for watching.